Learn how to use the Hasura GraphQL engine with Azure SQL Database, this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Abby from Hasura. Abby, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do in Hasura? Hi there, thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Abby. I work here at Hasura as a software engineer um, on the data sources team. Our team is responsible for enabling and adding support for new data sources, um, such as Azure SQL Server. Awesome, cool. Well, we're excited to have you on the show. And using Hasura and GraphQL with Azure SQL uh, isn't something I know a ton about. So I'd love to just pass it to you. I know you have some stuff prepared to share with us. You know, how do these things work together and how is Hasura making it easier to work with things like Azure SQL Database? Sure, absolutely. Um, so just a brief intro to kind of Hasura. This is a um, Hasura GraphQL engine is kind of a real, um, is a fast open source GraphQL service that gives you instant real-time GraphQL APIs on top of your, uh, on top of a variety of data sources. Uh, so originally that was Postgres, um, but more recently we've started supporting SQL Server, BigQuery, Citus, and many more to come. Um, so it gives you a real-time GraphQL API as well as uh, built-in row and column level authorization. So uh, today I'll be demoing how just how quick and easy it is to connect to a new or existing Azure SQL database, um, run a series of GraphQL queries against it, and then uh, customize the permissions for more granular row and level, row and column level access control. So if it's okay, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so just for a, a bit of setup, what we're looking at here is the GraphQL Engine Console, which is kind of the main admin interface you'll be presented with when you start working with Asura. And this is what you might typically use to build the backend for your application, connect new data sources, as well as exploring queries. Um, I also have a view app, just a sample application, uh, to-do list application, that I'll be using to illustrate some of the core features that we can uh, use on Asura. And for this, I've uh, followed some of the uh, Azure sample repo steps, uh, which will be shared, I believe, after this after this demo. So I've created an Azure SQL database. And the first thing I want to do on the uh, Azure console is to connect it. So I'm going to give it a sensible name like SQL Server DB. Driver is MS SQL Server. And I've already got my connection string um, behind an environment variable, which is Hasura SQL Server URL. So I'll connect this database, and I can immediately see it show up in my data manager here. Uh, we can ignore this Postgres database for now, um, but you can see here I've connected to my uh, readily set up Microsoft uh, SQL Azure database here with some default settings. Um, <clears throat> If we take a look at what's available, um, just for the purposes of a demo, I've said kind of set up uh, the schema already. So I've set up a to-do list table and I've set up a user table so that I could demonstrate some of the permissions features. If I were to, for example, try and test the GraphQL API straight away, um, I'll actually find that in this uh, GraphQL um, API Explorer, I don't yet have any queries available. And the reason for that is if I go back to the data manager, I haven't yet tracked these tables. Um, and so when I click track on them, this, as the message suggests, this will expose the listed tables and views over the GraphQL API. At the moment, I'm just tracking tables, but you can also uh, track views if you like. And I also have some relationships that I also want to track. So I'm exposing all of these things over the GraphQL API, such that when I revisit this uh, GraphQL API Explorer, I now have access to these queries immediately on the left-hand side. Um, and to be honest, that was it. That took all of, I don't know, <laughs> uh, two minutes to connect a database, uh, track those tables. And now we immediately have access to, um, to some queries, uh, some GraphQL queries exposed via Sura. So if, for example, I wanted to get the current to-do list items in my table. I haven't added anything yet, as, as we can see in the application. Um, but one of the first thing that I wanted to highlight here was just how quick and easy you can get started um, with a, 
uh, GraphQL API. Um, it's already got some kind of suggested queries. Um, I like this because I don't have to write any custom resolvers myself. Um, I don't even really have to know any GraphQL. Um, I've got some suggested queries here. And so I can kind of select all of the fields that I like. I can add filters and things like that, um, really on a point and click basis. Um, if I if I haven't yet familiarized myself with, with GraphQL. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, so this is a simple query, we're just getting the items in the to-do list. Um, I can also run mutations uh, by the same view and with the same kind of ease of doing this in the UI. So if I wanted to create a to-do, I can do this all via the UI here. I don't need to do any as much things. And I need to return some field in order to, in, on a successful response. So I can run that in the uh, graphical UI. And that's executed successfully because I've got the response. And if I navigate to my application, refresh the page, I'll see that to do list item there. So, really, what I'm illustrating um, via this GraphQL, um, sorry, this graphical explorer, I've got get to do. I've got a create to do mutation, and I'm doing exactly the same thing. Um, th this application is running the same queries in, in exactly the same way. Um, awesome, so this is really cool. I have a, I have one question as someone who's kind of new to this, like yeah. from, from the SQL side, how can users understand what SQL queries are generated and sent to the database? And then like, if I need to troubleshoot, how, how do I do that from here? That's a fantastic question. So if, um, in order to see what queries are being generated, uh, you can actually use the sort of feature analyze and you can select a query um, to be analyzed. And you could do this for any queries you decide to run in your, in your application. Um, you can see both the generated SQL and you can also see the execution plan. So if you're finding particular queries are um, slow or you aren't getting exactly the results that you expect, um, this would be the place, this would be the place to do it. So you can drill in as deep as you want with your um, generated SQL and with your execution plan. Awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> um, so that was uh, creating creating new to-dos and uh, viewing them and Essentially, we're calling the same queries um, here in the application. Uh, I also wanted to show, I suppose we can illustrate deletions as well. And using the code, um, it's, uh, I'm using the Explorer tab here um, to build my queries. If I wanted to, 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 to delete and insert another to do actually before I do. Create, and I can also do updates and things like that. So all of these are just calling, um, right. calling very basic GraphQL queries. But the idea is that you actually don't even know to, need to know any GraphQL to make immediate use of um, of this functionality in Hasura. Uh, the other thing I wanted to illustrate is that this kind of contrived example gets a little bit tedious because I might have to, for example, um, refresh the application. You can imagine if this is an app that's accessed by multiple users, I might want to do something like um, fetch data uh, as it's updated. So if we have a shared to-do list table and it's being accessed and um, data is being changed by multiple users, uh, you might want something like subscriptions to effectively fetch data whenever it's updated um, without having to do the uh, having to refetch it from the client effectively. And so that's something that we can do really, really easily in Hasura as well, just by changing this query keyword to subscription and running it. So what this does is this um, effectively listening for updates to our uh, to our data, we get real-time updates. And the nice thing about this is that Hasura comes with these subscriptions completely out of the box. You don't have to do anything additional here again. No manual um, resolvers to write. Uh, what am I talking about? I, I think it's going to do this item. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and so what we're seeing here is that this automatically got updated. 
um, because we're just listening for listening for updates. So you can imagine here the utilization that you might get um, getting real time updates to your data if you have multiple users, for example. Um, <clears throat> the very final thing that I wanted to share was the uh, row and column level authorization features. For that, I can close down the application or we'll just close the tab. And I wanted to go to the data and schema management page. Uh, before I do, some of you might have noticed that I have two tables in the schema. I have a to-do list and I also have a, a user list. If I did um, want to limit, for example, the permissions on the users table, um, so for example, as a as a user here, I can access all other all other users, which we might want to restrict for um, a variety of different purposes. I can do that via Hasura's uh, data and schema management page and uh, navigating to the user table and clicking on permissions. And I can actually introduce a new role here. Um, so I can introduce a user role with um, its own uh, row and le uh, column level authorization checks. So for example, if I wanted users to be able to view other user IDs, but not their name, I can apply the uh, row select permission um, that the that users can select any row without any checks, but limit the column select permissions to just the user ID. So I'm not accidentally exposing any data here. And then I effectively, I don't really want the user to be able to do anything else with um, any other rows in the user table. So here, um, in order to preview that, what I would need to do is update the request header to introduce um, both Asura role, I want to make that user. So you'll note that I'd added a user role in addition to the admin role. And actually that's all I, that's all I need really. Um, and I don't know if you saw very clearly that actually I've limited there the, the um, queries oh. that I have access to now as a user. So if you wanted to see that a little bit clearer, I can just toggle this on and off. You can see as an administrator, which is the default on the GraphQL console, I have access to to-do list, user list, um, the to-do list, user table, etc., and all of the mutations on those tables. Um, but once I toggle on the accessory role, uh, I, I now only I have restricted permissions effectively, and you can uh, kind of customize these um, these permissions however however you like. So you can denote as many um, roles as you like and as complex permissions as, as you need for your application. And awesome. I think that's about that's about it. Those are the things I wanted to show. This is really cool, Abby. Thanks so much uh, for coming on the show and sharing this with us. Um, I am feeling like I really want to get hands on and get started. Uh, do you have advice for how folks can get started with Hazura and their Azure SQL databases today? Yes, absolutely. So I would say, um, first off, take a, probably take a look at the blog post that I suppose we'll share after this. Um, on top of that, Hasura just has a wealth of documentation about getting started. You really can get started as simply as I illustrated there in just a few clicks. Once you have an Azure uh, SQL database set up, um, you just go to the data tab, um, pass in either the connection string on its own or a um, environment variable, and then you can start um, you know, accessing your data and running queries against it almost immediately. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Abby, uh, for coming on the show. To our viewers, we put a bunch of links in the description so you get started with a tutorial, review the blog post, and let us know what you think of using GraphQL from Hasura with Azure SQL. Um, again, thanks for joining us today. Uh, give this video a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.